getting a little sidetracked. <laughs> I've been praying about what to do when we run out of uh, emotional videos and Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 videos because I originally had a ministry going that I was reading eight devotionals per day and recording them and sharing them and posting them on the web and God was blessing it and it took us from an initial beginning of Vidivo to where we are today which is really expanded the ministry greatly and uh, so I had been using the early ones that had been on a previous server to uh, bring them into Vidivo and to customize them by adding them into an intro and an exit that has some you know neat music and some scriptures for it but you know I'm beginning to realize how much work that was you know and I, I still want to do that I'm still going to do that but I think what we're going to do is we're going to move from transition over from those older videos to maybe using um, K. Arthur and starting your day and then eventually migrate into uh, uh, I can't remember what it's called um, well, Chuck Smith's book, you know, and sharing some of the insights to that. I think it's um, According to Grace. I, I can't think of it right now. It's one of those days where it's kind of foggy, and, or my brain's kind of foggy, it's kind of rainy, and I'm just not thinking clearly. But I think we're going to do those and begin to record those live, you know, into the meditations in the morning for the beginning and the starting of the day, you know, because I like to kind of keep things relevant, you know, and to keep them up to date, you know, with what. God is doing, you know, in our lives and how he's moving and chooses to move, you know, with a lot more relevant information, you know, for instance, like today we're going to share on, you know, from Joyce Myers, Starting Your Day Right. My wife's little devotional is kind of cute, you know, I used to uh, tease about it because a lot of people at different times have struggled with Joyce Meyer because she doesn't fit what people want to make her fit into. First they wanted to write her off as a false teacher, but they couldn't prove that she was. Then they wanted to write her off as a woman pastor, which she doesn't claim to be. Then they wanted to write her off as an evangelist, which she really isn't. So then they really didn't know what to do with her. <laughs> Meanwhile, God was using her anyway, so she's so big, you know, and so blessed, you know, that God just uses her the way God uses any of us, you know. It doesn't matter whether you're big or small, rich or tall, short or fat, or whatever you may be. You know, God can use anyone, anywhere, anytime that he chooses to. He can use a donkey, he can use a star, he can use camels, he can use wise men, he can use Nebuchadnezzar, he could use Abraham, he could use you. Wouldn't that be a shock? <laughs> and he could use me. So whoever he uses, you know, he blesses and he encourages them at that moment that he uses them. It doesn't mean that he always will, it just means that he chooses to in his own timing and his own way. The way that the Bible records that is that the Holy Spirit manifests gifts severally as He wills for the edification of the body, choosing to do that with which He is sovereign as God to be able to do, and we are not, as we are not God, and we are not sovereign, but we are created beings. So we listen to what the Spirit says to us. Today, You know, I don't even know what the day is on this one. It's like, when I look at it, I went, I didn't read it today, so what does it say? Hmm. I don't know. The date today is the day. Which is typical of God, you know, is that every time that I think I've got the right one, turns out I have the wrong one. So I go ahead and stop what I'm doing, just like in normal devotionals. And, go back and check my computer and say, oh, so it's not that day, it's the other day. Okay, cool. You must have it your way, Lord. So, stay plugged in. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your moral excellence and your praiseworthiness, the noble and good deeds that you do, and recognize and honor, praise and glorify your Father who is in heaven. From Matthew 5.16 Jesus is the light of the world, and he lights up those who come into relationship with him. When Moses spent time in God's presence, his face became so bright that he wore a veil because the people feared to come near him. See Exodus 34, 29-30. 
As a lamp must be plugged into the electrical outlet to eliminate the darkness around it, so we must stay plugged into God if we want our light to so shine before others. The only way we can walk in love and behave the way we should is to pray, to read the Word, and experience fellowship with God. To stay plugged in, to be a light wherever you go. And you know that's so true because oftentimes people think that they can just do and they jump into, say, a ministry aspect or they decide that they want to be a you know, servant of God or they want to do the ministry or they want to be a worship leader and they go through all these manifestations or gyrations of learning some skill and then they go through it by rote, by practice and they're very dogmatic about it and maybe even professional with some kind of talent but you see there's a, a little bit of a difference when the anointing is there when God actually pours out his spirit upon flesh then it comes alive it's like wow it's almost as though a light bulb just clicked on and the person becomes Animated, you know, kind of like what I do sometimes. You know, women, I'll be talking a lot, and we're kind of like, Yeah, Lord, you know, I'm just going through the motions. And all of a sudden, God says, No, you're not. But, ah! you know, and I'm like, Okay, you know, wow, cool. But, you know, He always brings to me in my life, you know, that moment where His inspiration fills me and causes me to share that with which He once said and spoken rather than what I may have a token of or an idea about with which he would choose to direct me. Because I may start in one direction, but the Holy Spirit always seems to take me wherever he wants me to go. And I yield to that, even as I'm speaking to you now. I just let that go and let the Holy Spirit flow, so to speak. I think there's a lot more to God than we understand, and a lot more to reality of who the Holy Spirit is than we even conceive of or we try to pretend we understand. I think that there's actually something about God's love that is manifested in the Holy Spirit that causes us to glow, to shine, as it were, to be that light, you know, is that as God loves us in the presence of the Holy Spirit, that we become like the moon, where the moon reflects the light of the sun, so too we reflect the light of God's love outward, if we are doing as God wants us to do, sharing His love, His mercy, His grace, His kindness, His gentleness, His meekness, His temperance, His long-suffering. His loving kindness. You know, it'd be easy to just set ourselves up as interpreters of God, or as prophets or seers, as some people do, or as ministers of God. But you know, when you are a reflection of God, when you are just a light that God has lit, when you are just that beacon that God has set forth, when you are just that manifestation of the Holy Spirit inside you, then it's so obvious to others that they go, Wow, that person has been with the Lord. You know, and that's kind of where we need to be. You know, we need to read the Word till we get to that place. We need to pray until we come to that place. We need to study and to, you know, find ourselves that relationship. And when we've got that, then go forward with it to reveal to the world that there is that reality of having a personal relationship with God. Because if you don't do that, if you think that you can go out into the ministry and just fake it, you know, in order to make it, it isn't going to happen. Because, frankly, you're going to be found out. And God's going to prove to you to be a hypocrite. But if you develop your relationship first, and then as soon as you're in contact with God, and God says, I want you to go, and you go and do, it's like, wow, Lord, man, you want me to do that? Cool, I like this. You know, and you'll find out that you enjoy it, that you look forward to it, that you experience something unique, with that time in ministry that God gives to you so that he could reveal himself to people around you. That's really what God wanted for us in our relationship with him. He wants all of us to be like mini Jesus, you know, just all of us in constant contact. You know, not the program, you know, that's on the internet, but constant contact with God Almighty, our Father, so that the manifestation of his spirit in us would make us so obvious that we are with Jesus and Jesus is in us that the world would want what we've got, that they would say there's something different about that person, that no matter what we do, everything would prosper in some way, that somehow there would be a difference about the way we look at things, the way we do things, the way we act, the way we respond, and the way we care for one another. Because that is what God would have us to do, love one another as he has loved us. So, 
I think, you know, in sharing and taking the time today, you know, I think that's what we'll do, is that we'll, we'll take these devotionals my wife, you know, can never find her book because I always steal it. <laughs> and we'll share those in the meditations, you know, and apply them, you know, as they fit to our lives today, you know, and each and every day that we look to God to fill us with His love and with His Spirit. Because after all, we are His workmanship. We are His children. We are His co-heirs. So we need to let Him lead us so that He and not you or I will guide us. Don't you think that's a good way to go? To let God be our GPS, you know, our, our driving system, you know, those little things that tell you, you know, turn left, turn right, follow the map, you know, that kind of thing. Would it be nice to have God doing that in your life? Isn't that really what He's supposed to be doing when you trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning not in your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledging Him, and let Him direct your path? I think He's probably the best navigator that you got. 